Hello and welcome to the hexahedral meshing tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to mesh a cube and a cylinder attached to it. So first of all, I'll create a cube using the standard shapes option in ICM CFD. Right now I'm separating points, curves and surfaces into different parts. Now in order to create a cylinder, I need two base points. So after creating the base points, I will go to the standard shapes and give the radius here. And select the two points to create a cylinder. I'll repeat the same steps to separate curves, points and surfaces into different parts. Now that my geometry is ready, I'll go for blocking. Give a name for the part, say fluid, as fluid is going to flow through it. Select 3D bounding box type and click on apply. So a basic block bounding the complete geometry is created for me. Now I'll start working on this to achieve my final blocking topology. So I'm splitting it into two. Then I will associate the edges which are possible to associate right now. Now I am associating the edges to their respected curves. So all those edges which were possible to be associated to some curves, I have done them. Now I will associate vertices to the respected points. Now the right side block which is going to capture the cube is completely associated. Proceeding further, I will create a O grid through this block. And as this O grid has to be stretched till both ends, I am selecting the extreme faces and by clicking apply, my O grid has been created. Now I will again repeat the procedure of associating edge to curves for those newly created edges. Now I will delete the extra blocks that I do not require. Later I will snap the vertices to their final position. And then I am making the vertices to be in line with their parallel vertices. So association of the blocks have been done and the final blocking topology has been created. Now it's time to give the pre-mesh parameters. So I'm starting by selecting the edges one by one and giving the number of nodes required to capture the geometry correctly. So 
so I am left with some more edges on which number of nodes has to be specified. So I am done with the number of edges to be set on the blocks. Now if you can see, even though the geometry has been correctly captured, but the quality of the hex elements at four corners are getting reduced. So we have to create a O grid inside the cylinder which should also continue within the cube. So again repeating the same procedure to create an O-grid. I am creating few new blocks and these blocks are also needed to be specified some sizing. Now you can see the quality issue has been resolved. Now we need to resolve boundary layer, hence we will give some sizing parameters. Now I'll explain the premass parameters using this picture. So every edge has a starting side and a ending side, as you can see it from the arrow. So in the left hand panel, under premass parameters, you find the spacing 1, ratio 1 and spacing 2, ratio 2. These settings are for the starting side and the ending side respectively. So let's go and use these settings for capturing the boundary layer within the cylinder. As we can understand, boundary layer settings should be done on the starting side of this selected edge. So we will change the value of spacing 1 from 0 to 0 0.001. Meanwhile, you can see the present sizing on the starting side here in the right hand box. Now let me explain you the significance of spacing 1. It actually means the length of the first cell starting from that vertex along that edge. And the ratio 1 means the growth ratio by which successive cells sizing should be increased along that edge. Let's define the sizing on the edge inside the cube. As we can see, sizing should be given on both sides of the edge. So I am giving spacing 1 and spacing 2 symmetric values. And after assigning the size, it is necessary to increase the number of nodes so that it can accommodate the sizing with that many nodes. So you can keep a check on the ratio 1 while increasing the number of nodes. Once the number of nodes are sufficient enough to maintain the sizing that we have specified, the ratio 1's actual value plotted on the right side box will come to the same value. So now it's become 1.2 in both the ratio 1 boxes. So this means our sizing is obeying the rules that we have specified. Now let's check the premise. We can see the finer boundary layer cell sufficient to capture the boundary correctly. So it's done. But here you can see there is a jump between the middle block and the surrounding blocks. If there is a cell jump present in your mess, then it might affect the results adversely. So it's better to remove those cell jumps which are visible here by selecting this edge and increasing the number of nodes while keeping an eye on the spacing to actual value. So now the node sizing has been more or less uniform. So this is an example of a good quality mesh.
now let's see the mess from internal domains that is inside the volume here we are having a look on different surfaces of the mesh and by using scan plane i will see the mesh quality for the internal domain So by using grid index i am actually scanning through the volume this is the end of the cylinder In this video you are able to see the transition from circle to square while we are traversing through the volume The later procedure includes converting this block file into unstructured mesh format so you need to right click on pre mesh and select convert to unstruct mesh now you can see quad elements have been created as well as hexadecimal volume elements so from our pre mesh we actually created a complete mesh with quads and hex and let us stage is of exporting that mesh into specified format as we are interested in fluent version 6 i am creating a fluent version 6 file using these settings and giving a name fluent.msh should be created by clicking this okay button so this is the complete procedure of creating a mesh using the blocking method thank you